My name is Tim Bergstrom, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer and President of Bergstrom Automotive. I'd like to tell our team that I'm their, their uh, chief cheerleader. So we have 1,400 teammates. Uh, we're in the service business. Um, all of our dealerships are in the state of Wisconsin currently. Um, we started in Nina, Wisconsin. The majority of our stores are in the Fox River Valley, so Appleton, Oshkosh, Nina, Menasha. We've grown to Kakana. Uh, we've grown into the Green Bay market, which is a market we really like. It's a market that's extremely similar to uh, Appleton. Uh, we've grown into Milwaukee and we've grown into Madison. First and foremost, we're working really hard on having the best team. In doing that, we have four main goals that, that we're chasing that we revise every year. And the number one goal that we have is the best team. And so last year we were recognized by Automotive News as being in the top 100 of employers for uh, dealerships in the nation. So we we're pretty excited about that. And our team's pretty proud of that. So. Our recognition event will have 400 um, people attend, so 200 teammates and their spouses. And uh, what it is is our night to celebrate the best of the best in our company. And, you know, these 200 teammates really are the creme de la creme. They they set the tone for the rest of our 1,400 teammates. We've won multiple manufacturers awards this year, where our manufacturers say we are uh, one of their, if not their, best dealer. And it's, it's all, of, all of our team that's produced that. I, I started with my father and my uncle in this business, watching them shake hands with their teammates, um, asking them ab about their weekends. And uh, I felt myself the last couple of years running around trying to see everybody, trying to visit them all. And I wasn't getting it done and I wasn't as connected. So as a result, um, uh, we, we started looking at, at different ways to connect with them. And, and one of the things that we found worked really well was B-Team, and it's an internal intranet site where we do a video every day. And so the first thought was, let's, let's give our managers some content for their huddles. So let's, let's do a short video by me where we can reach out. And it, it expanded into, all of a sudden, now I can do videos and, and touch 1,400 team members, and, and we're averaging about 900 views right now. Uh, we found if we keep it under 90 seconds that uh, they, they watch the whole thing. We keep it fun. Uh, we kind of keep it raw. Uh, we don't want it to be too professional so that they tune out and say it's the elevator speech style. Uh, we've, over time now, started using other leaders in our company. I was missing the part of the handshake where I'd say, how are you doing? It's great to see you, but I wasn't getting feedback on how it was their week. So now, um, with Facebook, we've invited them to join me with Facebook. Um, my Facebook page is a personal page, yet a work page. I just uh, got back from Japan and had spent a week there, and I stayed in contact with our team. I, I knew that uh, one team member's child had gotten ill, another one had been in an accident, and we were in conversation. and. Uh, um, it's, it's been fun. It's, it's, we've, I've gotten to know our team even more so. For us, for me, I've looked at it as that's almost my main mission in cheerleading our team, or our, our main connection in cheerleading our team. And it's enabled me to be far more effective. Um, I'm closest with our team through Facebook, but uh, the younger generation has, has switched to Instagram. Uh, we're using Vine, I'm using Vine, Tumblr, Twitter. Twitter's been a fun one. That's been a unique one. I didn't think I'd like it at first, um, but more so I'm, I'm liking getting my news from it. It's, 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 I'm, I'm very segmented in what I'm able to read through Twitter, and that's been good. And I think social media, uh, there's two ways to look at it. You can look at it as a tool and to engage with your team, engage with your guests, engage with your marketplace. Or you can look at it as it's part of advertising, and I, I, I want to stay away from it. it it's, it's a slippery slope where you can get in trouble. We went in with both feet, and uh, um, so far it's working quite well for us. So I, I wouldn't be afraid of it. Um, and if you do make an error, um, I, I believe if you're working with integrity and, you, and you're working with honesty, no matter what you put out there, um, it, it can't be too big an error. The way I look at it is we have 24 general managers, 24 chief cheerleaders in each operating unit. But it can get confusing on how many buildings you have, how many franchises you have. Um, and that's actually a moving number for us on a regular basis, especially as we're trying to grow. 
Another way we look at it is we have every franchise uh, sold in America except for the exotics. So um, you could come off saying that that is a, a, almost an arrogant thing to say. We look at it as our team is that good that they're, they're earning the right. Um, the manufacturers get to choose who they want to represent them. They, they look at metrics as far as market share. Do you sell enough vehicles for them? Do you take great care of your guests? And, and they use the metric of CSI. And ultimately, um, do you run a healthy business that uh, ultimately is going to represent them well? So uh, when, when our manufacturers come into a site location and they look at our facilities and how our teams keep the place so clean and they walk around proud, uh, we are a company that is incredibly proud of our team, incredibly proud of our mission of taking great care of our guests, and uh, as a result, we uh, um, believe we're going to continue to keep growing, because if you're not growing, if you're not trying to keep winning, um, you, you get stale, you fall behind. I like that they choose us. I'm proud that they choose us to represent them. We met with a fair amount of our manufacturers uh, prior to seeing their vehicles. And time and time again, you heard this is a, this is a product business from the manufacturers. We got to get your product. But time and time again, you heard from my father say, yeah, but it's a service business too. And we as dealers, that's, that's our job. We don't produce the cars and uh, we're working very hard with our team to make sure that uh, we aren't just selling a commodity. We're selling service when you buy a vehicle from us.